So we've seen how we can use the law of superposition to calculate the electric field due to a series of discrete charges. So what we're going to look at now is how we can calculate the electric field due to a continuous charge distribution. So in order to do this, we're going to be making use of charge densities. So for a linear object such as this ruler here, we use a linear charge density, which is usually represented by the Greek letter lambda. So lambda is equal to Q divided by L, where Q is the total charge along our linear object, and L is the total length of the object. For a two-dimensional object, a surface, we use the surface charge density, which is represented by the Greek letter sigma. So sigma is equal to Q divided by A, where Q is the total charge on the surface, and A is the total surface area of the surface. For a three-dimensional object, we use the volume charge density, which is usually represented by the Greek letter rho. So rho is equal to Q divided by V, where Q, once again, is the total charge on the object, and V is the volume of the object. So these equations hold for the case of a uniform charge density. So that's where the charge is evenly distributed along the line or the surface or through the volume. So to work out the electric field due to a continuous object, there's a few steps that we follow. So for example, consider this ruler, imagine it has a linear charge density of lambda, and we want to work out the electric field at, say, some point here, a bit away from the end of the ruler. Then there's several steps that we should follow. Firstly, we should break the continuous object into small increments, and each of these increments will have a charge dq. Now, if possible, we should try and exploit the symmetry to simplify the problem. So ask yourselves, do the electric fields in some of these directions cancel each other out, letting us ignore them? And finally, we need to sum the contributions of each of the components with charge dq through integration. So probably the easiest way to see what I mean by all that is to have a look at an example. So an example problem we can solve. A total charge Q is uniformly distributed along a rod of length L, shown in the figure. Calculate the electric field at A, point A, a distance A from the left-hand end of the rod, and b, point b, a distance b, below the perpendicular bisector of the rod. Okay, so we'll start with calculating the electric field at this point a here. So in order to do that, the first thing we need to start with is a diagram. So on our diagram here, let's consider a little increment, and we'll let this increment have a width dx and what we're going to need to work out is what's the electric field at a due to this little increment dx so we know that for a point charge the electric field is given by kq over r squared so in order to work out the electric field due to this little increment we're going to need to know the charge on this little increment and we're also going to need to know its distance from a so we can write this is part A, we can write DE is equal to, and then K. Now, this little increment here, we can let it have an increment of charge DQ. So what we mean by it having an increment DQ is that if we sum up all the DQs, we're going to get the total charge along the rod here. And we can relate the amount of charge on this increment DX to DQ, through our relationship dq is equal to lambda times dx. And this just comes about because lambda, the linear density, is equal to q over l, and this is constant along the rod. So this tells us how much charge there is on just this little bit here. So we, can, we have dE 
d is equal to k times dq that's the charge on that little increment divided by the distance of that little increment from point a here so we are calling this distance from here to here x so this is divided by x squared and so to get the total electric field we're going to have to integrate this so we'll have the electric field is equal to the integral now we're integrating along the rod so you can see that the rod starts here at x is equal to a and it goes up here to x is equal to a plus l so the limits on the integral are from a to a plus l and we've got k times dq which we've said is equal to lambda dx and then we're dividing by x squared okay so we can pull common factors out the front so we've got the k and we can pull lambda but let's write lambda as q on l and then we've got the integral of dx on x squared and we're going from a to a plus l and so this is equal to kq on l and then we're integrating x to the minus 2 so when we integrate x to the minus 2 we get minus x to the minus 1 and that's from a to a plus l so this is equal to kq on l and then we've got let's pull the negative out the front and then we've got 1 over a plus l minus 1 over a and so this is equal to minus kq on l we'll put a common denominator of a times a plus l and then we've got a minus a plus l so you can see this a will cancel that a and so we end up with minus l up here we've um we've got two negatives then so we can make those two negatives multiplying together into a positive and then this L will cancel this L. And so we end up with this is equal to KQ divided by A times A plus L. So that's our expression for the magnitude of the electric field here. It's going to be to the left as it's away from a positive charge. We should just check that this makes sense. So one way that we can check that it makes sense is if L got really, really short, then we're approaching a point charge. And we know that the electric field for a point charge is given by this expression. So um, limit as L goes to zero, this goes to KQ over A squared. So that is what we'd expect. As L becomes really short, then we end up with a point charge, which is a distance A from this point A here. And so that does look how we expect it to. Okay, part B, we approach in a similar way. So once again, we're going to consider a little increment dx. But let's just draw a new diagram down here so that we can make everything really clear so here's the bisector this is B here this length here and this length here is L on 2 and in this let's consider this little increment here with length dx and this time it's easier if we measure x from the midpoint of the rod so let's call that our distance x here and we've been told that it helps to exploit symmetry wherever we can. So if we're considering an increment with a length dx on this side of the bisector, let's also consider one which is a length x on this side. So when we consider this little point here, we can see that it's going to have an electric field directed along this line down here and if we call that angle in there theta then this angle here is theta and this other increment is going to have 
an electric field in this direction with the same angle theta there. And so hopefully you can see from this diagram that if we break these two up into vertical and horizontal components, the horizontal components are in opposite directions, but the vertical components are both down. So the vertical components are going to add together while the horizontal components are going to cancel each other out. So the horizontal components cancel while vertical add. So what we'll want to do is work out just the vertical component. So let's call it DEY. And that's the vertical component of the electric field due to just one of these little increments, this dx here. So looking at this equation here is going to be k times the amount of charge on this increment. Now it's got the same length as up here and it's the same rod. So the total charge is still lambda times dx and then divided by the distance squared. So the distance between here and here, we've now got this triangle here, this is x, this is our angle theta, and this is b. So this side is the square root of x squared plus b squared. So this will be x squared plus b squared. So this is the total electric field, but what we're trying to calculate is just the vertical component of the electric field. So to get that vertical component, we're going to times it by cos theta, where theta here is marked on the diagram. And so cos theta, looking at this diagram, we can see cos theta is equal to adjacent, which is b, over the hypotenuse, which is the square root of x squared plus b squared. So we can write this as k lambda dx times b over x squared plus b squared times the square root of x squared plus b squared, which is equal to k, let's replace lambda with q on l, so this will be q on l times b dx, and then on the bottom we've got x squared plus b squared to the 3 on 2. Okay, so now we have the vertical component of the electric field that this little increment dx here contributes to the total electric field. So now to work out the total electric field, we're going to need to sum that up for all the increments along the rod. So we can either start at this end of the rod and go through to this end of the rod, or because we're exploiting the symmetry here, we can just start at the middle and go to this end of the rod and then double it. So I think that's possibly easier. Either of those is absolutely fine, but let's do it that way. So we're going to double it. And then we're going from the middle of the rod to the end. So this is, we said x equals 0 was here. This is where we were measuring x from. So we're going from 0 to L on 2. And then we've got k q b dx divided by L times x squared plus b squared to the 3 on 2. Okay, now if we pull the common factors out the front, we've got 2 k q over L, and then we've got the integral from 0 to L on 2 of B dx divided by x squared plus B squared to the 3 on 2. So this is a standard integral which is actually on the formula sheet for this course. So we can now substitute, we, we can just use that to solve it. So um, we can see that that is going to be equal to x divided by b times the square root of x squared plus b squared. And then we're going from 0 to L on 2. So now we can substitute in these. So we've got 2kq on L times L on 2 divided by b times the square root of L squared on 4 plus b squared. Then when we substitute in 0, that's just 0. So you can see this L will cancel this L. This 2 will cancel this 2. 
and we end up with this is equal to k cubed over b root l squared on 4 plus b squared. Okay, now again, it's sensible just to make sure that this answer makes sense. Now, in the case where L gets really, really short, we've basically got um, a, we're, we're a distance B away from a point charge. So if we're a distance B away from a point charge, we expect it to be KQ on B squared. So substituting in L equals zero, you can see we do end up with KQ on B squared. So that is as expected. We should also give the direction, so we should say this is vertically down. So that gives you an example of how you can solve this type of problem.